Hello mga freelancers and welcome to my YouTube channel. For today's tutorial, ang topic natin is paano nga ba mag-file online ng 2551 key form or percentage tax for the second quarter. Para sa kompletong schedule ng due date or deadline ng percentage tax every quarter, please visit and follow my Facebook page that's on www.facebook.com slash a mother's road or just simply tap the link on the video description below. Para makapag-file online, lalo na po yung mga bagong registered lang sa BIR, kailangan nyo pong mag-download at mag-install ng EBIR Forms Package sa inyong mga computer or laptop. At para naman sa mga dati nang nagpa-file online, as I always remind you guys, always update your EBIR Forms Package. Yung pag-install niya at pag-update, actually same process lang yun. Meron akong separate video guide for that, so be sure to check the description box below for the link. Um, as of today, ang latest version ng EBIR forms is 7.6.1 and lagi po ako nagpo-post ng announcement lalo na kung may bagong version ng EBIR forms so make sure to follow my Facebook page or YouTube channel para sa mga iba pang updates Now, once you're done with the installation or update, proceed na tayo sa video tutorial For this tutorial, I'll be using a non-existing tin Para sa mga first-timers, syempre, kailangan mong filapan lahat ng information na kailangan. Pero kung matagal ka nang nagpa-file, you know the drill guys, all you have to do is just key in your teen and then hit tab on your keyboard para mag-auto-populate yung, yung naka-save na information. So, for our next step, under the list of BIR forms, hanapin mo yung 2551QV2018. Ito siya, quarterly percenta percentage tax return. And then, dito mo rin makikita yung mga nakaraan mong i-finile. And then, let's go ahead and click fill up. Okay, para sa uh, bullet number 1, piliin mo yung calendar. And then, automatic nang select yung December sa month. And then, just make sure na yung kasalukuyang taon yung nandito sa year. So, explain ko na lang din yung fiscal. Para sa mga self-employed individuals or professionals, calendar talaga yung ginagamit. Yung gumagamit ng fiscal usually are yung mga malalaking kumpanya or corporation. Kasi hindi nila nasusunod yung January to December na calendar period. So, ang kanila ang tawag is fiscal period na kung saan, let's say for example, um, nag yung sinusunod nilang operation is March, magsa-start sila ng March hanggang February, March 1 ng kasalukuyang taon. At as yung end niya is February 29 or 28 ng susunod na taon. Okay, so sa so number 3, second quarter yung fina-file natin. So, select second. Sa so number 4, amended. So, select yes kung ito ay amended return. Otherwise, select no. So, number 5, number of sheets attached. Sa akin, 0, wala naman akong ina-attach sa percentage tax. Pero kung ikaw meron, you'll have to indicate that here. And then, sa part, 1. Background information, items 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So, ito yung kanina sa main screen. Uh, Nag-auto-populate na siya dito. So, remind na lang din na make sure na tama yung information na ilalagay mo doon pa lang sa umpisa. Sa number 12, are you availing of tax relief under special law or international tax? 3D, select yes kung meron kang tax relief. Tapos sa 12A, specify mo kung special rate ba siya or international tax at 3D. Otherwise, select no. Kung hindi naman siya applicable sa iyo. Sa number 13, only for individual taxpayers, so sales or receipts are subject to percentage tax to be filled out only on the initial quarter of the taxable year. So, kung ano yung pinili mo for the first quarter ng percentage tax, yun na yung mag apply sa buong taon. So, ang nag apply lang talaga ng, ang nag-fill up lang or nag-file ng percentage tax is yung mga naka-graduated rates. Kasi yung mga naka-8% income tax is exempted sila sa percentage tax. 
Pagdating naman dito sa part 2, total tax payable kung mapapansin mo grade out siya or naka-disable. Kasi yung ibang information na yan is manggagaling sa page 2. So, skip muna natin yan. Discuss natin yan ma- mamaya. Punta muna tayo sa part 3. Dito sa part 3, details of payment, kung ikaw naman ay magbabayad sa AAB or Authorized Agent Bank or Municipal Collection Officer, sila yung mag-fill up nung part na yan. So, let's skip that as well. Punta na tayo sa next page, sa page 2. Okay, dito naman sa page 2, dito sa Alphanumeric Tax Code or ATC, ang pipiliin mo is yung PT01. Zero. Ano nga ba yun? Yung P- yan is yung mga person na exempted from VAT, um, 3% yung tax rate. Okay, so dahil nga po yung mga non-VAT taxpayer, ito yung mga below 3 million yung gross annual sales or income. So kapag ka... Kapag ka kasi ikaw ay naging VAT taxpayer na, iba na yung mga tax rate mo, matatanggal na tong percentage tax. So, even though na, kumbaga, eh, exempted, kung hindi ka nga magbabayad ng VAT, or hindi ka magpapataw ng VAT sa iyong mga sales, meron ka namang babayarang 3% na percentage tax. And then, para naman sa taxable amount, dahil nga ang ipinafile po natin is yung second quarter. So, ang ilalagay mo po dito is yung kita mo mula April 1 hanggang June 30. So, let's say for example, 85,000 pesos. Um, and so, hindi rin po kayo pwedeng magbawas ng expense. Yung buong kita nyo po talaga, yung ilalagay nyo dyan. And as you'll notice, the nag auto compute na po yung mismong form. Kinuha na agad yung 3%. Kaya meron tayong tax due na 2,550. And if we try to go back to page 1, mapapansin nyo na na-transfer na po yung information na yon dito sa number 14. Total tax due, 2,550. Dito naman sa uh, less tax credit or payments attached proof. So, Ito yung mga, pag nag-fill up kan, mula 15 hanggang 22, um, that, in that case kasi, or in that situation, you will have to attach supporting documents na. So, that's the, kapag nangyari yan, you'll have to visit your RDO para magpa-receive ng iyong tax return, whether it's percentage tax or income tax. Um, basta magkaroon ka ng uh, supporting documents. Uh, meron kasing memorandum ang BIR na kung saan kapag ka ikay walang attachments pero nag, nakapagbayad ka na sa yung um, napiling mode of payment, there's it's really not necessary to visit your RDO anymore. Alright. So, para naman sa number 15, creditable percentage tax withheld per BIR form number 2307. Alright. So, discuss ko lang to dahil last time nung first quarter filing, ang sabi ko sa inyo, ito yung dinedidak ng employer sa inyo. Pero, actually, I did the research because of the word percentage. Kasi, di ba, sa income tax ang nakalagay lang. So, creditable tax withheld. So, I did the research and I realized na mali yung statement na sinabi ko. So, um, gusto ko lang i-correct yan. Um, ito po ay yung mga taxpayer yung mismong nag-file ng tax, e eh, nag-advance payment siya gamit yung BIR Form 2307 para maging uh, convenient para sa kanya. Kung baga, e, eh, magpa-file na lang siya, tas ibabawas na lang niya yung in-advance payment niya. Um, so, very convenient. So, may mga taxpayer pala na ganun. So, gusto kong um, i-discuss sa inyo yan para may idea rin kayo kung ano nga ba tong creditable percentage tax with help. Kasi, nung last... Um, FB Live ko may nag-inquire about this and yun, kaya ni-research ko siya at pinag-aralan ko. Kaya naman, let's say for example, ayan, meron tayong advance payment na 10,000 pesos. Okay, para naman sa number 16, tax paid in return previously filed if this is an amended return. So, ito yung mga nag-file na sila, nakapagbayad na, and then, tsaka lang nila na-realize, ay mali pala yung amount na inilagay ko sa taxable amount. Mali, kaya nagkaroon or may mga ibang entries dito sa uh, part 2 na nagkamali sila. 
So, kailangan po nilang mag-amend ng return or baguhin at i-correct yung nauna nilang final. Pero may kaakibat po kasi yan na penalty. Kaya naman, I highly recommend na talagang i-check ng mabuti bago po kayo mag-file or mag-submit sa BIR. Pero kung napapansin nyo yung sa akin kasi, naka-disabled dahil nawang sagot ko sa number 4. Pero, for example, yes, yung sagot mo dyan, ayan, magiging, pwede mo na siyang lagyan ng amount. Pero, balik ko lang sa no. Alright. And then, sa number 70 naman, other tax credit or payment, specify mo lang kung ano yon and enter mo yung amount dito. Kaya naman, sa number 18, total tax credit or payments, we have a total amount of 10,000. At sa number 19, tax is still payable or overpayment ay negative 700, sorry, negative 7,450. So, nag-auto-compute na po ulit yung form. Pero yung negative sign, it indicates na ito ay overpayment. Okay. Discuss natin yung sa penalties. So, banggitin ko yung tukol sa nag-amend ng return. May penalty yon So, you'll have to study yung tukol sa penalties. I will put the link on the description box below. Medyo complicated kasi yung pagkocompute niyan. Um, or you can also you can also coordinate with your RDO kung magkano ba yung, kung magkano ba yung inyong babayaran. Kasi po, kailangan nyo na siyang ilagay kasama nitong amended return nyo. Kunyari, amended return to. Um, otherwise, magkakaroon po kayo ng open case sa BIR. Pero kung mapapansin nyo, wala kasi akong penalties. Um, lagi akong on time magbayad or e actually even before the due date inaasikaso ko na siya at saka hindi ako nag amend ng return kaya naman yung ating total amount overpayment is still negative 7,450 and naka-enable itong portion na to na if, on if overpayment mark only one box um, na pwede kang mamili kung gusto mong maka-receive ng refund or ma-issuehan ng tax credit certificate. Pero yung mga nag-a-advance nag payment kasi, yung kaninang pinag-usapan natin, usually ang pinipili nilang option is to be issued a tax credit certificate simply because um, yung 2307 na form na i-attach nila ngayong second quarter, hindi na nila pwedeng gamitin yun sa susunod na quarter dahil nabawasan na siya. Uh, nagamit na nalila yung small portion. So, ang natitira na lang kasi is 7,450. So, yung tax credit certificate na yon would indicate na ito na lang yung amount na natitira sa yung advance payment. And then, that would be their supporting documents para sa third quarter filing. So, I hope that makes sense. Pero halimbawa, wala naman talaga akong creditable tax withheld Kung mapapansin nyo, hindi na ako overpayment, kaya na-disable na yung portion na to. And then, for our next step, kailangan nating of course, i-validate yung form to see kung meron ba tayong nakalimutang fill upan na importanting um, part nitong form. So, let's click on validate. So, ayan, validation successful. Ibig sabihin, wala tayong na-miss uh, na information. Pero, paano nga ba kung, ano nga ba yung error kapag kami nakalimutan tayong fill upan? So, punta ko sa page 2 at subukan kong tanggalin yung mga information na nilagay ko dito and try to validate the form. So, as you can see, yung error message niya is in-indicate niya kung saan mismo yung part na nakalimutan mo. So, just click OK. So, balik ko lang yung information kanina. Okay. And then, balik ako sa page 1. Okay, good. So, again, let's validate the form. Click OK. And then, pwede mo na siyang, para sa pinaka last step, submit yung pinaka final copy. So, please ensure that you have um, internet connection, access, and a valid email address indicated in this tax return. So, click OK. And then, OK. So, ito na yung part na kailangan stable na yung internet connection mo. Para, kasi ito na yung pinha ipapasa mo na yung form sa BIR. 
Okay, so submit successful na daw. A notification will be sent to your email. Please ensure that the said email address is correct. Then check your inbox including your spam folder in the next few minutes for the email. Print or save the email as an evidence of e-filed return. There will be some delays on email sending at confirmation of confirmation. Please bear with us. So ayan, kung talagang first time mo pa lang mag-file actually, most likely mapunta siya sa spam folder. So ang technique naman dyan is to just add the BIR to your email contacts para next time is direct na siyang mapupunta sa yung inbox. So, just click OK. Para naman sa information about yung mga authorized electronic payment channels, you can actually click this link to read about that. Pero if you're already aware of that information, you can click close to go back to your form. And for the next step, ang kailangan mong gawin is to print or save the form pero depende yan sa payment option na pipiliin mo. So, let's say kung ikaw ay magbabayad sa AAB or Municipal Collection Officer, syempre kailangan mong mag-present ng form doon. Um, so, you'll have to print out this uh, form in three copies. So, three copies per page. Tapos, kailangan mo ring i-print yung email confirmation from BIR. Three copies din. Pero kung ikaw naman ay magbabayad um, sa kahit na anong electronic payment channels na gusto mo, um, I would still suggest na mag-print o kaya naman mag-save ka ng kopya ng iyong form for future reference. You can either save it to your laptop or computer, flash drive, or any cloud storage device na gusto mo. Um, simply because, paano kung makorap yung EBIR Forms Package? Siyempre, mawawala yung mga nakasave na form dyan. And also, kapag ka nagpalit ka ng computer, so, o kaya masira yung computer mo. So, may mga unforeseen incident na kailangan talaga maging prepared ka. So, kailangan mo yung mga forms na yon for future use. Ngayon, kung ikaw naman ay walang babayaran or may binayaran na at wala ka namang attachment, so, hindi mo na po kailangan pumunta ng iyong RDO kasi ang pupunta lang po doon para magpa-receive ay yung merong mga attachments o kailangan idagdag na supporting documents doon sa kanilang filing. Please check out the description box below lahat po ng link that we discuss all throughout this video tutorial including how to print your EBAR forms and how to pay your tax dues using GCash are all posted below. Sana marami kayong napulot na aral mula sa video na to and I hope you give it a thumbs up. For questions, comments, and even video suggestions, feel free to post them on the comment section below. At para naman sa mga susunod pang video tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel today. At click mo ang notification bell para lagi kang updated. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I'll see you again next time.